All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I just woke up. Um, I'm going to take this video a little bit slow, if you don't mind. Um, it's like almost 7 a.m. here. The wife has to get up at 7 a.m. Her alarm went off at like 7.20, and she's like, oh, can you wake me up at 7? And I'm like, oh, guess that means I'm getting up. Um, but I wanted to talk today about uh, some people had some, not some leveling questions, but like some, some economic questions. Also, I just recently found out that that $100,000 uh, hardcore tournament thing is going on. And so what I'm currently doing is, uh, well, for number one, I'm rolling my eyes at it after after reading the rules. Um, rolling my eyes so hard, in fact, that the universe is probably skipping a fraction of a rotation uh, on the subject, even though you can't see me. Um, it's not that bad, uh, to be perfectly honest with you guys, the rules that they have set up. But, um, how do I put this? Uh... I might be making a video series explaining in no uncertain terms how you can win that tournament series as a paladin. What gear to wear, what tactics to use, versus what class in no uncertain terms. And the sad truth of it is, is that you can win that, that tournament relatively easily as a paladin. Um, you don't need to be very skilled at all just off of pure auction house Andy gear. No, that that's that. I'm, I'm literally not joking. Um, but I'm currently asking around if anyone is that I know is participating in that tournament. So, for example, that would be like Peace Blade, McConnell, um, <clears throat> a few other names come to mind, but they're hard for me to pronounce, um, to see if they want me to keep such information on the TLDR, um, TLDR on the down low, um, or if they uh, don't mind it being public. All right, cool. Um, so let's start with this whole economic thing in general. Um, I tried to find some good farming locations uh, in classic World of Warcraft, uh, particularly for like this tournament and so forth and so on. So you can see here we've got a list um, of a, a nice widespread of hard to find, uh, uh, meaning you wouldn't have to uh, compete with them, uh, with anybody, uh, ghosts and demons, like undead and demons, so you can use exorcism on. Um, we also have the kind of um, resources you can be generating while you're, you're farming that location, if that makes any sense. Uh, what I personally like to do is I like to go to these locations uh, with my paladin, knowing exactly uh, what I'm there to mine or, or fish or um, herb. And I know that the nodes are on a 30-minute time cycle, or at least they used to be. You know, they're, they're, they, I think they're, they're dynamic respawns now, um, thanks to uh, a blizzard. But basically what you do is you'll level in this area so far as the nodes are there to collect. Uh, so you'll be leveling and you'll collect the nodes at the same time because they give you gold, right? And then I would log over to another character and level them instead. Now that sounds stupid, but uh, I made a lot of gold in Classic World of Warcraft just by having like multiple characters. So you slowly level like a bunch of other characters to like level uh, 35 or so so you can make Arcanite bars and generate passive gold income that way just off of the... Um, uh, the rested XP, if that makes any sense. So I'll pop in and I'll pop off, pop in, pop off, um, looking for uh, to see if, if the mining is up or if the herbs are up, and then I'll farm there for a little bit and yada, yada, yada. Um, feel free to do as you like. <coughs> the important thing about these farming locations is that you get to use exorcism. Um, exorcism is easily one of the most many efficient spells uh, us paladins get access to, and it greatly accelerates your uh, leveling ability, especially um, considering you don't have a lot of good gear, if that makes any sense. Your gear could be out of date and terrible, and with exorcism alone, you're still going to be leveling uh, super, super fast. Exorcism on a 15-minute cooldown, or a 15-minute, 15 15-second 15 cooldown, is extremely spirit regeneration friendly to be used multiple times, um, which brings us to another thing in general. So with the different types of paladins that you can gear, um, particularly the stamina spirit uh, style paladin or just the, the spirit paladins in general, um, single target uh, leveling is essentially back on the menu boys. And this spirit gear goes basically super saiyan as long as you have um, exorcism that you can use. <clears throat> but more importantly, from a gold farming perspective, this allows you to farm places that you personally know that you can 
have a fair bit of downtime <clears throat> uh, to gather up. So, like, uh, fighting on the beaches. So, for example, uh, killing mobs on the, not just the South, uh, um, South, South Shore, South Shore Beach. One sec, let me cough. The disadvantages to waking up in the morning. Um, uh, Duskwood, no, not Duskwood, uh, blah, 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 blah. Swamp of Sorrows, the beach in Swamp of Sorrows comes to mind. It's full of crabs and murlocs, but more importantly, you can go around murdering, uh, crabs and, and, and murlocs, and there'll be fishing nodes that you can pick up, um, every now and then, which is absolutely amazing for your gold farm, and it sounds like a waste of time until you realize that you're spirit geared, so you can burn all your mana down, uh, very quickly on a pack of mobs, and then fish that node, and you wouldn't have to eat and drink. It's a complete um, hyper. It's it's hyper efficient for your time and and for your gold, if that makes any sense. Also, the stamina spirit gear is extremely cheap. Um, on the auction house, uh, there are multiple options for stamina spirit gear, which you don't mind at all. So, for example, there's strength stamina spirit gear, like all on the same thing. Pick that up. Not not it, meaning if it's cheap, you don't mind doing that. If you find of the owl gear, you don't mind doing that. If you find just about any gear that has spirit on it, as long as it's not agility spirit, you're pretty much good to go picking up if you pick it up on the cheap. Um, and this is just one hell of a of an amazing and cheap way to level. So, to be perfectly honest, I don't have... Oh, right. We're doing the economic video here. Okay, so the only other thing to, to note about economics has to do with botting. And I'm going to try to keep this video short, so I'm going to uh, TLDR this, but if you want a longer video on the subject, I'll make a longer video on the subject. The short version is that botting in classic World of Warcraft looks completely different based upon what type of server you're on. If you're hardcore, it's going to look one way. If you are um, non-PVP, um, non non-hardcore server, it's going to look another way. If you are being a normal server. If you're a PVP server, it'll look completely different. Uh, botting by far will be um, at its worst and at its most detrimental to the game on um, a server where the bots can be out in the open world farming and there's not a damn thing the player base can do about it. On PvP servers, there's a damn thing the player base can do about it. On PV, uh, on hardcore servers, there is a double damn thing that 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 um, uh, um, the player base can do about it, right? Because you can screw, you can, not only can you report the bots, which Blizzard is paying a lot of attention to on the hardcore servers, but you can screw with them and their coding in such a way that they probably die and get killed, or RNG comes for them and they die and they get killed. You, 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 you get the idea, right? So why is it so important that the bots stay the hell out of the open world? Well, it's because it limits what they can and cannot farm in quantity. Um, which means that, uh, what I'm trying to explain is that if you, if you remember the old Frost Adamus videos where he talks about like raw gold farm areas, where you go out into an area and just murder mobs and you vendor trash, um, pretty much everything you get from the mobs, uh, bots destroy those as viable farming areas because they will do it far more efficiently and far, uh, more, more cheaply than, than you will. They're basically slave labor, right? Highly motivated slave labor. <laughs> ah. Um, <clears throat> um, the same goes for them entering dungeons. There's only so many, uh, dungeons that they can go into and only so many resources that they can get, um, from going into dungeons, uh, on, on normal servers are locked out, like, you know, uh, five dungeons an hour or something like that. And on hardcore, they're, they're restricted to like one dungeon a day. Okay. So for example, um, thorium, uh, mining in Dire Mall East, I want to say, uh, comes to mind, right? Versus where the hell do you get mithril in dungeons? Mithril is so so much harder to find in dungeons that, and, and bought uh, 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 in dungeons compared to mithril. Now, the reason why I'm saying all this is because the only way to compete with bots is to find an open world farming area where you can gather a resource that you know bots are going to struggle gathering um, for whatever reason on your server and then selling it on the auction house in exchange for gold. That's the only way to compete with the bots as an actual um, um, farmer yourself. So my gold farm, my personal gold farm, is in Silithus, and it's to uh, gather up um, sandworm meat. The reason why I prefer this gold farm is because the bots can't do it. Um, there's too much PvP in the area. Uh, the mobs are too dangerous in the area. There's too much RNG associated with the mobs. The bots can't do it. 
So when I go out there and I gather up something like, you know, um, uh, 20 or, or 30, and, and basically um, the, the gold farm for me is like 500 gold an hour practically, right? A geared player, you get the point. So you want to uh, basically attempt to do the exact same thing, find an open world resource, and you can check the auction house for this stuff. So basically you'll go to the auction house and you'll be like, okay, well, what's a resource that I could farm? Let's check the prices in the auction house. If the prices on the auction house for the resource are, an, are extremely high, um, which is exactly what it is for sandward meat. On my server, they're like 15 gold a pop. I'm like, Jesus, that's insane. Uh, back on era, <clears throat> back before era uh, was rolling, it was like two gold a piece, maybe four gold a piece. Um, even before all you guys showed up, meaning on era without all the bots being there or returning to classic WoW, it was again it was like four four it was like uh, it was about six gold a piece, six or seven gold a piece. I don't know how the hell it got to fifteen, but I'm happy to see it. Um, that's basically what you do. That's how you compete with the bots. Um, some other things come to mind. A, a lot of herbs. Eh. Uh, Dire Mall East is also a really, uh, really notoriously good herb farm. I'm trying to think about what kind of herbs don't spawn there. Um, a lot of the herbs are fine. Uh, really, it's, it's, oh yeah, the uh, essences. So, for example, in Silithus, um, essences of air are a super popular farm. Uh, because, again, the bots cannot exist there. There's too much PvP. Um, to exist there, the mobs are too dangerous, and you can't get the mat anywhere, in, in, just about in any dungeon. Um, the elemental water, uh, not elemental water, essence of water comes to mind as being the same way. Essence of earth comes to mind being the same way, although there's plenty of that in uh, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. Um, try to find a resource that's really expensive on the auction house that you know that you can make a good farm of in the open world. Um, because uh, as long as it's a PvP server or a hardcore server, because the bots cannot compete with us in those two servers. On non-PvP and not non-PvE servers, um, all you can do is report them and pray. Um, so anyways, I'm in the video here and uh, Data Salt Boys, but that is basically how I like to try to make my money. Um, the number one thing that I like to do, um, but this is also just me, is um, with all those characters that I level um, up, um, to like 35 or 40 or, or some such so they can um, Arcanite transmute or they can uh, make moon cloth and so forth and so on. Just get a passive gold regeneration. Um, their secondary is usually herbalism and I'll log them out at uh, key locations on the map that nobody ever visits because why the hell would you um, uh, um, station them there to, to, to pick up this particular herb node out in the middle of, of nowhere or this particular mining uh, node out in the middle of nowhere. No one's going to do that. And I'll just cycle through the characters like, you know, with their 20 second uh, logout duration and pop on, get the herb, pop off, get, get do, do that or the herb. It's basically how I used to fund Dracova. Um, these days on Era, you make your gold through GDKPs uh, primarily. Um, just because everything is so cheap, if that makes any sense. That's the only other way to compete with the bots is to engage actually in the, in the GDKP um, system and meta. Anyways, I want to keep this video short, so I'm going to end the video here and Deus Old Voice.